So it appears we are live once again. Let's just see, because usually what happens is it tells me the live video is starting and then we actually go live. So hello and welcome to another chat about menopause for Menopause Awareness Week, Day, etc. So I talked about anxiety, I've talked about sleep, and I was asked to talk about IBS, what actually means irritable bowel syndrome. So I wanted to run through some of the symptoms that can affect the digestive symptom system at menopause. But first of all, let's just talk about the term irritable bowel syndrome. I think it's one of the most bandied about phrases for us and actually one of the most useless, because what, what does it actually mean? What are the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome? If you're listening, maybe you want to just jot them down and let me know, because when I ask my clients, tell me about your irritable bowel syndrome, I get a whole host of different answers. You know, so I might get somebody whose bowel is bloated and they feel constipated and they feel better when they go to the toilet. I might get somebody whose bowel is windy, but their bowel movements are regular. I might get somebody who feels very what we call liverish, um, edgy, and their bowel is very loose. All of that can be described as irritable bowel syndrome. All of that, to me, as a homeopath of 25 years, is, is just completely different symptoms. I want to know, how is it for you? And, you know, a homeopath and natural health practitioner will be wanting to know how your bowel is from top to bottom. So when someone says I've got IBS, you know, you might as well just say, I don't know, I have some food intolerances, I have some foods that don't agree with me. You know, we really need to qualify this. Um, and so I just find it one of the most useless medical diagnosis that that um, almost that anybody walks in with. At least if they walk in and they say I've got asthma, I know they've got breathing difficulties. You know, and that, that's the definition. Um, someone's got a headache. I mean, at least, you know, we know the location. As a homeopath, I'm going to ask lots of different things. But IBS, you know, the gut is enormous. The gut, obviously, it can feel enormous at menopause. It can feel bloated and uncomfortable. Let's kind of understand why that might be. But, you know, the entire gut, if spread out, is, is I mean, I think the, the intestines um, you know, meters long and the entire gut would, would cover the surface of a tennis court. So that's a lot of material. <laughs> that's a lot that can go wrong. That's a lot of absorptive surface that can have issues. And there are all sorts of causations for that. And I hear people saying, I've got a leaky gut. It's it's like there's there's so much that can be supported. So yeah, what you what you hear from me is is that we need to know more detail to get to a solution. And um, it may be that we need to do a few things. But let's look at, first of all, at some of the, the symptoms that are officially associated with menopause that can be um, digestive issues. So working from the top, working from the mouth, the oral cavity, we can have things like receding gums. Now, I, I would, that's the very top of the digestive system. And, and in that situation, you're probably going to the dentist to talk about issues but we actually need to talk about oral health, which is the beginning of the digestive system. Burning mouth syndrome, burning tongue, nausea, heartburn. These are all what I call upper digestive system issues. Indigestion, you know, being burpier than normal when you've eaten certain foods. All of these um, are your bowel rebelling in some way, you know, from the top to the bottom. And then, um, you know, that in association with those parts of the body, I would be saying, how's your digestive enzymes? So digestive enzymes or prebiotics are what we need to digest food. So if we've got anything going on in the upper part of the system, we might be looking at our capacity to make digestive enzymes. And so we might be looking at something as simple as, are you sitting down? relaxing and ready to eat or are you rushing to eat your food are you eating your food straight from the fridge bad idea let it come to room temperature these things help us digest being ready to eat 
your body is thinking about I'd like to eat some food, the salivation is changing, the taste buds are priming themselves. You're, if you're cooking and processing the food yourself, your body is preparing to eat it. If you're buying processed food, your body's not ready yet half the time to eat it. You know, and of course, if we're busy or we're not feeling great about ourselves, you know, processed food can feel like a comfort. But in many ways, it doesn't serve us. So, so nausea, heartburn, upper digestive issues, indigestion could well be that we need to cultivate our digestive enzymes, our prebiotics. And those prebiotics help us digest individual foods. So it might be that we have a problem with certain foods and that's come up at, at menopause. We can develop allergies. We can develop sensitivities to particular things. And I'm thinking of histamine here. So as we move down through the digestive system um, and we are beginning to absorb nutrients, you know, how is our capacity to absorb those nutrients, minerals, vitamins, etc.? Is there something that we are not able to access? And that's usually the small intestine um, and issues there. So it's a little bit some of those prebiotics moving into probiotics are there foods that we can eat and add in that assist with digestion so we can take a prebiotic and over-the-counter product or it might be that we can eat certain foods that excite the system to do its job more efficiently so if you look to something like the mediterranean diet you'll see things like artichoke olives for instance bitter foods eaten fairly early in the meal will help us prepare to digest the heavier foods, the starches, the fats. You know, it's often a really great and very sen sensible reason for all of this. And then lower in the bowel, you know, the lower bowel, um, and the, even even right down to um, the, the, the lower colon, um, is, is more where we'll get that kind of bloating, discomfort, uh, maybe constipation or diarrhea, things that can come up again sensitivities to food or an inability to process food fast enough all that belongs to the digestive system all that could be counted as irritable bowel syndrome if it was out of kilter so you know a lot of these things can crop up at menopause and what it can be is that our hormones mean that we are not able to digest certain foods as efficiently but we can we can support ourselves as you can hear by how we eat, what we eat, and paying attention to the effects of what we eat. So actually, you know, the other day I was writing something. Um, I did a talk last week on the thyroid, which is such an important organ for us. It looks after our metabolic rate. So the rate at which we are able to process food, digest food, operate in general, you know, and if that is sluggish or slow, then it could be an indication for hypothyroid, underactive thyroid. And that's very common at menopause. It often goes hand in hand with raised cholesterol. And there's so much you can do. So it could be that at menopause, you need to pay attention to eating protein more regularly. You need to pay attention to eating some of the um, brassicas because they help you um, digest and scavenge excess estrogen more efficiently. So we've got pathways down which we we absorb estrogen, good, bad and ugly, as we call them on our natural menopause course. And if you're someone like me who tends towards an ugly um, digestion of estrogen, there could be lots of reasons for that. It's really important that you have a little bit of the brassicas um, or the cabbages every day so you might have a little bit of kimchi every day and suddenly you know you're not gaining weight as as much and and you you're um able to metabolize your food more more comfortably so for many women cutting back on gluten is a really really good idea and i would suggest just avoiding it totally for two months eating other types of grains that are not gluten heavy so that's avoiding pasta avoiding bread um, 
potentially avoiding um, rice, you know, going over to things like amaranth, um, perhaps millet, different types of grains, oats generally, and palatable for a lot of people. They're very low gluten. So just avoid it for a bit and see what happens. How much does that change your capacity to digest comfortably? Um, avoid table salt or what we call iodized salt because that means that you're not able to control iodine levels and you are having a very refined product which isn't serving you minerally. Go over to Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt with, you know, up to 84 different minerals in it. You need those minerals to, to function. Zinc, uh, magnesium, selenium, you know, iodine, as I mentioned, you know, there's just so many minerals that we need. Molybdenum, so many, manganese, magnesium, you said, you know, it's just um, chromium, <laughs> it's just loads of minerals that we need for function. We don't need a ton of them, but we do need good quality salt as a source for many of those. So just ditch the table salt. Avoid non-organic dairy. You know, dairy that is not organic has been pumped full of hormones. Do you need excess hormones right now? No, you don't. <laughs> so ditch the dairy that's coming from a cow that's been pumped full of hormones. Ditch the dairy that's coming from a cow which has received an awful lot of medication in its life. If you go organic, that cow won't have had that. So you, you know, that's a great place to start. Experiment with different types of dairy. You know, so it might be that you don't tolerate milk well, but you might be okay with butter, cheese, ferments, you know, like yogurt or kefir, and that these are great sources of calcium for you and you metabolize them better. You just can't do milk at the moment. You know, if milk is causing bloating and gut pain, chances are you've developed um, a sensitivity to lactose. Leave it out. Introduce a digestive enzyme called lactase to help you metabolize lactose. You know, so, so stop the dairy for a while if you're getting bloating and discomfort and gut pain. And make sure you're getting your, your minerals that you need from green vegetables. And then introduce organic dairy, introduce um, lactase, and that might come from other fermented vegetables that help you um, create the digestive enzymes that you need. Now you can digest the dairy efficiently because it is a good source of protein for us, a good source of minerals. That's why we, we eat dairy. That's why we do it in the first place. And some people find that, you know, sheep, or goat is very different for them. So there's some really great tips there. I said avoid gluten. When you introduce the gluten back in, only go organic and only go for sourdough. Many women develop a sensitivity to yeast. Yeast in, in our culture at this point in time is not a very good product. It's quite contaminated. So ditch it all together and go for sourdough. Um, Avoid coffee or, or at least reduce it, as I said, in both the anxiety and the sleep conversations. Reduce coffee to once a day, a really good coffee in the morning before 11 a.m. or before 12 p.m. Definitely don't have it after then. You know, um, really look at the quality of that. It can be overstimulating. Um, it can affect drugs that you're on. So if you're on thyroxine, coffee can affect that. That's that's it. That's an in bit of information that a lot of people don't know. But too much coffee will, you know, eventually lead to adrenal fatigue. But for many people, it's simply irritating for the gut. So, you know, make sure it's good. Make sure it's early and check in. How is that affecting me? Many women develop sensitivity to alcohol. So avoid rosé, avoid red wine for a period of time. See if your sleep improves, see if your digestion improves. Um, avoid alcohol altogether. Many women cut right back in menopause. Um, go over to a natural wine. You'll hear me say that a lot. Naturally grown, naturally processed, no sulfites in it. A very simple product compared to some of the overly processed wine that's on the market. 
and just get rid of refined sugar you know natural sugars in small amounts like a little bit of honey um a little bit of um maple syrup you know these these can be great for us just dump the refined sugars dump the foods which are difficult for your body to digest because you know your body's got a lot going on at menopause um another thing to try and experiment with is um vegetables are you better off with steamed vegetables or lightly cooked vegetables poached baked vegetables than you are with raw vegetables sometimes there can be an issue histamine issues um around uh, and oxalate issues around digesting raw vegetables and that can crop up at menopause so i will post a document um in the files section about um, useful tests at menopause around the digestive um, system and one last thing before i finish is to dump inflammatory oils now that's not dump all fats because you really do need fats they, our hormones many of them are made you know with fats in mind um the raised cholesterol is is trying to balance out the lipids for us um so there may be a function there that we haven't yet understood but um, I could talk more about that another time. But avoid um, overly processed industrial seed oils like soybean, peanut, wheat germ, rice bran, cotton seed, canola, corn, safflower, sunflower, grape seed, and something that's just labelled vegetable oil. You know, all of those are overly processed in the vast majority of places. So, you know, unless you can guarantee um, a cold pressed source of um, potentially an organic peanut oil or an organic sunflower oil, you know, I'd just avoid the lot because those oils create inflammation throughout the system. And that could be joints, obviously, it could be the gut. Um, yeah, you just want to get rid of them for all sorts of reasons. But we do need fats. We need good quality fats and we do need the omega oils. So we do need to be sourcing those, just not um, from these polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, which are industrial seed oils. They, they, you know, you might as well kind of like oil the wheels of your car with them by all means. Um, sort out your push bike, your bicycle with them. Just don't put them in your body. Not a great idea. So, so that's some thoughts on, you know, the real kind of like outside um, edge of the digestive system. And, you know, another thing to be conscious of is is foods which um, which have a lot of histamine in them. So I'm just going to finish on that note. Um, that you know and these are kind of really obvious when it comes comes down to it a lot of them i've already said you know high histamine foods alcohol processed food pickled canned foods um matured cheeses you might want to be careful with smoked meat products some shellfish beans and pulses some of the nuts um not very good chocolate uh, vinegar ready mail made processed meals salt you know that the, the bad salt that i talked about i call it bad salt table salt sodium chloride basically um and and highly refined sugars all of those can create a high histamine conversation in the body and then you'll break out with an allergic reaction bloating discomfort itchy skin you know some kind of sign that your body is not happy with you and last night um and been doing um, uh, actually the last session of our natural menopause course. And afterwards, I had um, a few pieces of chocolate um, celebration. No. <laughs> and and I noticed at bedtime, I was like, I was a bit itchy. And I was like, I wonder if that chocolate that I'd had, had actually, because it was already in a histamine, you know, quite a kind of highly strung state, you know, we'd just done our, our last session of the menopause course and i sorted out um you know the email to follow through the next morning and it was, you know it felt quite high vibe and then i had some chocolate and then i itched you know and it was just like oh you, you kind of tip tip the scales there a little bit too much in it in that direction so you know listen to your body what's it telling you um 
and and have a think about some of the things that I've outlined here for you know what many people would call IBS <laughs> what do you think IBS is what are your symptoms you know maybe add that down below um does tea affect thyroxine too Helen asks um I'm assuming you mean black tea regular tea possibly the studies haven't been done Americans aren't such big um tea drinkers as us avocado oil is is supposed to be very good for us cold pressed avocado oil is supposed to be good so that was some questions from Helen thanks for those and um yeah if you're watching this on replay on the Facebook group press hashtag replay and if you're watching it on YouTube please like and subscribe as they say press or smash that like button <laughs> that's what one of the guys smash the like button down below um i'd really appreciate that because um you know the more people that say hi that was great i liked it that was helpful um and i know that i'm talking up the right street <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you here again tomorrow